Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Cannonball Run is a 1981 action comedy film that was directed by Hal Needham, and it was produced by Hong Kong's Golden Harvest Films. It features an ensemble cast that includes Burt Reynolds, Roger Moore, Farrah Fawcett, Dom DeLuise, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Adrian Barbeau, Tara Buckman, Jamie Farr, Terry Bradshaw, Mel Tillis, and Jackie Chan. Before there was ever the Fast and Furious that hit the big screen, there was this film, blending a broad range of comedy, stunts, and a whole cast of fast cars. It went on to thrill audiences and delight generations of viewers. The movie introduced Western audiences to then a little-known actor named Jackie Chan. He was age 26 when the camera started to roll for this film, but he wasn't known in the U.S. at all. He was already a big name in his native Hong Kong. Considering that his films were not well known in the U.S. at all at the time, the kung fu comedy pioneer might seem like a really odd addition to this cast of big name superstars. It makes more sense after you know that the movie Although set in the U.S., the film was actually produced by the Asian company Golden Harvest, and Chan was one of the hottest properties for Golden Harvest. Over the end credits of the movie, director Hal Needham included outtakes from the production. Jackie Chan loved this idea so much, he decided to start doing the same thing on his own films. This production boasts what truly is considered an all-star cast. But there's no doubt that the real star of the show is Burt Reynolds. At that time, Reynolds was considered the biggest movie star in the world, and he commanded a salary to reflect this. The actor got the amazing sum of $5 million to star in this film the most any actor had made for a single role up to that point. It marked the fourth occasion where he joined forces with director Hal Needham. He and the director had previously collaborated on Smokey and the Bandit and its sequel, as well as Hooper. It boosts some really adrenaline-charged automobile action. But above all this, it tries to really tickle your funny bone. This wasn't always the plan. It was first conceived to be much more of a straight-faced production, more of a standard action film, and it really wasn't going to star Burt Reynolds at all. Instead, the movie was conceived with another beloved Hollywood leading man in mind, Steve McQueen. Sadly, McQueen passed away at 50 in 1980 after a brief battle with cancer. Following McQueen's untimely passing, the script was significantly reworked to feature Burt Reynolds as the lead. Alongside Reynolds, the biggest star in the movie at that time was Roger Moore. The British actor appeared in the movie in the same year as For Your Eyes Only, his fifth film in the role of James Bond, 007. This movie cast Moore as Seymour Goldfarb, an American racer who bears an uncanny resemblance to, you guessed it, Roger Moore. And it features many more nods to Bond, including Moore driving Bond's most iconic car, the Aston Martin. The Bond producers were reportedly not too pleased about all these similarities and they put some limitations on the successors of this famous secret agent. Pierce Brosnan once revealed that during his time as Bond, he was contractually forbidden from wearing a tuxedo in any other movie. All of this was done strictly as a result of the Cannonball Run and Roger Moore's appearance in it. Even though the film was jam-packed with big names, they couldn't get everyone they wanted. 
legendary entertainer Sammy Davis Jr. was not the first choice to play Fender Bomb. Originally, the role was earmarked instead for Hollywood star Don Rickles. For a lot of the viewers, particularly the men in the audience, some of the movie's most memorable scenes feature the female racers in the black Lamborghini. These two racers, officially named Marcy and Jill, although their names are never mentioned in the film, are portrayed by Adrian Barbeau and Tara Buckman. As well as driving an eye-catching car, the duo wear low-cut spandex jumpsuits, which they use to help distract male traffic cops. Although in one scene, this famously backfires when a voluptuous blonde shows up instead. When they are first pulled over by the highway patrol officer, the actor playing the officer is an actor named Roy Tatum. Tatum regularly served as Burt Reynolds' stand-in, as this might be well apparent from his striking resemblance to the star. As outlandish as the cannonball run may be, it was in fact very loosely based on real-life events. The Cannonball Baker Sea to Shining Sea Memorial Trophy Dash was a bona fide cross-country road race. Although the event was entirely unsanctioned and illegal, it ran for several years in a row in the 1970s. Filmmakers were very quick to recognize the cinematic potential of the cannonball, and it had been the subject of two movies before this film ever hit the screens. The first was a hard-edged road race movie called Cannonball that starred David Carradine. Secondly, there was the Gumball Rally, a more light-hearted comedy, closer in tone and content to this film. Shooting a film that rests heavily on cars going fast and pulling off daring maneuvers has inherently strong risks associated with it. Tragically, the makers of this film learned this lesson the hard way when a stunt went terribly wrong. Stunt performer Heidi Von Belts was set in the passenger seat of the Aston Martin while another stunt performer drove the vehicle. While they were doing the stunt, the car, which had no seat belts, collided head-on with a truck. This impact left Von Belts with a broken neck when she was slammed into the windshield of the car. Luckily, she did survive, but she was left a quadriplegic. After a lengthy legal battle, she was awarded $3.7 million in damages, and movie stunt regulations were revised to make seatbelts mandatory. Take a look back at this really funny movie. It's kind of corny, but I have to admit, Terry Bradshaw and Mel Tillis are superb in it. Neither one is an actor, but they do a better job than the trained actors that they're in the film with. They're hilarious. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.